Hi, my name is Andrew and I am creator of the game Druid Test of Faith. And today I would like to show you and tell you about Parallax Effect in Unity. This video I will split into four different parts. You can select necessary video part via timeline below. So let's get started. First of all, we need to explain what the parallax is in video games. For what purpose I will launch my game and show you the parallax effect I've designed. As you can see, different objects in this scene moving with a different speed. The further object is from player, the slower it moves. You can see the same effect riding in your car from night sitting. Most of time the parallax effect used in 2D games to create deepness effect and make player to feel himself as a part of a game. But how to achieve with deepness? Well, I guess it's quite clear from parallax definition. We need to move our background elements with different speed. But unlike parallax definition says further object moves slowly, the object with big distance away will move faster. This happening because we create in not real parallax, we create in only its illusion. And since our observable object, the player, moves across the scene, we need to make all our game object to follow it. Now since we know all of it, let's create a background parallax effect. In blank Unity scene, let's first create our ground. Now let's create a few more background objects. Now let's create and use a sharp script and call it Parallax. Open with up in JetBrains Rider and add few variables. First of all, we need to add the parallax factor itself, through which we will control the background move speed. Next, we need to add our camera game object. We will move our background relatively to its position. And last one variable we need for now is a game object start position. Now let's define our start position. It should be equal to current game object transform position. Now let's change update method to fixed update method. It's with less resources near the update method. Now let's update our game object position with existing data. We need to set our transform.position with new vector free. As X we need to give a new data, multiplier, multiply starts position dot X plus camera transform dot position X. And the rest data we will keep untouched. Y as Y, Z as Z. Now let's add our script to all game objects we need to manipulate and let's see what we have. Please don't forget to attach necessary script files to your background elements and set up all its data. And remember, the further is element, the faster it moves. You should keep your multiplier and range between 0 and 1. And here I must make a small digression. If for some reason you do not know how to rearrange your layers and determine which one further and which one closer, then you need to open your game object with sprite render attached and in additional settings change order and layer number. Ok, now let's start our game and see how parallax effect works. As you can see now everything works fine. Different layers moving with a different speed. And even with tiny stone between layers hiding and showing itself. Nice, we just created the dumbest parallax effect ever. And now I will explain you why it is so dumb. For that purpose I will launch another my game scene and show you how it works there. As you can see when player running through scene mountains are moving. And when player falling from cliff, mountain even jumping. Well, basically it's an illusion. Because blue mountains do not move vertically. And only blue mountains have dumb parallax script. To prove it let's turn on scene view. And take a look what's happening when we jump in. As you can see the blue mountain with dumb script stands still. And the rest mountains with smart script follow player camera. So basically we need to extend our parallax script and add the a vertical effect. But to do not waste your time I will combine this topic with foreground parallax effect. So let's open up our JetBrains Rider and add few parameters. First we need to add horizontal only parameter. We will need it to lock vertical effect. It is necessary for some foreground objects. Next we need to add two mobiles. Calculate infinite horizontal position and calculate infinite vertical position. We will need it to special method to calculate start position. Because the parallax method we write before cannot do it properly. Well, let me show you. As you can see right now, scene look perfect. We have mountain in right spot and our parallax script attached. But what will happen if we will hit play? Well, mountains will slide away. And to make our future develop comfortable, we must control our parallax script vertical and horizontal calculations. So, now let's add last one variable we will need. Start camera position. Now let's give to our start camera position a value. And then create a new method and name it calculate start position. Now inside our calculate start position we need to create two float variables. First one x distance with value as camera transform dot position dot x minus transform dot position dot x and multiplied our parallax factor multiplier. The second one float will be y distance and will look exactly the same but taking y values instead of x. 
Now we need to add another one variable, in which one we will store our temporary data about start position. Next we will need to write two if statement for horizontal and vertical infinite positions. For horizontal we will write temp.x equals transform.position.x plus distance x and close to the same for the vertical positions, but instead x we will use y. Now we need to write the last one line with method. And here we will make our start position equals to temp data we just changed. Nice! Now all we need to do is to rewrite our fixed update method. First of all, let's add a vector free variable position equals to start position. Next, we'll need to write an if statement if it's horizontal only or not. And if it is, we need to write position.x plus equals multiplier multiply to camera transform position.x minus start camera position.x. As you may notice, now we change only x value, and it will represent our horizontal movement. And as I guess you already understand how to add here a vertical effect. All we need to do is to add to our position all necessary data, x and y together. And as a final step, let's change our position and write transform that position equals to current variable position. Now let's take a look what we have. As you can see, our parallax script is attached. For mounting, I will turn on calculate vertical position, just to fit better in my scene. And for few bushes at foreground, I will turn off calculation horizontal position. You will see what happened. Now let's hit play and take a look how everything works. As you can see right now, mountain sitting in the right spot. It will be extremely helpful for us during development. Also for background mountains now is turned down parallax vertical effect. And right now when we come in closer to bushes, you can see how we come in into camera. As you already know, this issue could be fixed by calculating infinite position horizontally. Now let's drag our game window aside and discover what's happening in the scene. There is one extremely important thing I must mention here. Now you can observe what mountains move same side as a player, when Bash is standing on foreground, moving opposite side. Let's call it parallax law, it's how everything should work. Objects, which is further observable target, will move same side as a target and objects before will move oppositely. To reach the same effect for same parallax script, we need to use the negative value for each foreground element as a multiplier. I guess all these variables will be enough for you to fully control all your parallax scripts. Well, there is only one topic left to finish. How to make an infinite parallax for background or maybe foreground, whatever you wish. So let's open up our parallax script one more time and add a few more variables. First of all, the bool variable is infinite to control with precise parallax effect state. Next, let's add a private float length. Afterward, define it in start method for if statement. And to define it, we will need to get components sprite renderer.bounce.size.x. And why do we define it with if statement? Well, it's pretty simple to explain. If we would like to move large amount of objects with same parallax factor, then most likely we will use for it containers. And this container won't have a sprite renderer attached to it. But since we are working with the infinite parallax effect, we will definitely have the sprite renderer on it. Now we only left to make an addition to fixed update function. Let's add an if statement if it is infinite. Next add a float variable which will be equal to camera.transform.positionx multiply 1 minus multiplier. Next we need to add another if statement. If temp more than start position.x plus length, start position.x will be plus equals to length. Next we need to write else if statement. Basically it's reverse version of first one. And both of these else if statement will allow us to control the parallax layer offset moment. So now let's test everything what we've made today. First of all, let's open up our empty scene with only ground on it. Create a new game object and call it Infinite Parallax. Next, we need to add to its sprite renderer component and drag to sprite render a special picture, which can be infinitely repeated left or right. Now let's fit it to correct position and scale it up to camera view. Nice, now we need to duplicate this game object two more times and drag to game object lane below to the first one to make it parented. Next, let's add our parallax script Hit checkbox what this one is infinite. And also do not forget to attach the camera. Now we need to drag our child game objects to fit from both sides. Left and right. And now we finally can hit play and see how it working. When our player reaches a certain point defined by middle sprite's length, all three sprites will immediately move one third part at left or right, depending on what direction we are moving on. 
Let's see how it looks from game perspective. Well, right now everything moves and works perfectly fine. So, there is only one last shard of knowledge left, which I would like to share with you today. For a camera game object, I would like to highly recommend to use a singleton button. For that purpose, we need to change our camera game object type to private. Then in start method we need to write camera equals game manager dot instance dot camera dot game object. And in this case we do not need to worry about parallax script camera object. It will be automatically added from game manager. And it is extremely helpful, especially when you seem have several tense parallax game objects. Well that's it for this video. I hope you like it and see you in the next one.